Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly from Field Day 2022. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Right out of the gate, I want to give a huge shout out to each and every one of you that participated in the field day challenge that I put out, where I ask you to post the WinLink position report and then pull a query for other stations nearby to you and maybe make a WinLink contact on field day. I pulled a list uh, late Sunday evening uh, that had 100 stations on it. There's actually two different lists. This was something I didn't know uh, going into field day, but there is a short list that'll give you 30 nearby stations, and there's another list that someone else told me about that will give you 100 stations. When I pulled that list, I think I counted either 54 or 55 stations that participated in the challenge. So that probably wasn't everyone, but I thought that was a really good representation of people participating in the challenge. Now, the other thing I want to let you know is I'm going to kind of shorten this. This is going to be a condensed version of the after action report. The full written after action report, uh, I'll leave a link to that down in the comment uh, below. I'll pin that as the first comment and I'll leave it in the description. So if you want to read all of the gory details, you can go ahead and click on that link and uh, read through that. Now, every year I do some sort of upgrades for my field day setup. This year, most of them were focused on the RV and not specifically ham radio. So I added an additional 100 watt panel. I upgraded the RV's battery from a uh, basic marine uh, deep cycle battery to a lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery. Also, uh, since last fill day, I've added uh, a generator to power everything in the RV, uh, including the AC and the microwave. I couldn't do that on batteries, so the generator does run the AC and the microwave uh, when it's needed. And I also added an AC soft start to the RV. That allowed the smaller generator to be able to power the AC unit without any issues. Now the weather for field day was hot as it typically is in Tennessee. I believe the high on Saturday was 94 or 95 degrees Fahrenheit and it was beautiful blue skies. We were only threatened briefly with one little pop-up thunderstorm but that fizzled out before it got to the field day site. Sunday was a bit cooler. It was uh, 88 degrees roughly by the time we left the field day site around 1 p.m., 1.30, and it was a bit nicer being fully overcast skies, though that did present some challenges on Sunday morning. We'll get back to that, though, in just a minute. The generator that I mentioned is a dual fuel generator, so it can be run off of gasoline or propane, but I only run it off of propane. I was able to keep the AC running in the RV for roughly 27 hours before both bottles were pretty much completely depleted. I think there was 6% left in one and 13% left in the other, but I was basically out of gas at 27 hours. Now let's talk about solar that I used and how that worked out. I had two different solar setups for fill day. One for the RV that is a 290 watt solar system that was able to generate roughly 67 amp hours of power during fill day. The second solar system consisted of a TP 60 watt solar panel, that's a folding style solar panel, and my power film 30 watt solar panel, giving me a total of 90 watts to recharge the ham radio battery. So I had two different batteries that were uh, just for powering the radios. And that system was able to keep up with all of my power needs on Saturday since we had beautiful blue skies. However, those two panels just weren't giving me enough juice early Sunday morning. 
uh, after the sun came up and I figured out that we were going to have totally overcast skies on Sunday. So I did a little bit of a science experiment and you can read more about that in the written after action report. It was good to drag out the old 857D radio and use it as my primary HF uh, workstation during field day. I ran that with a Raspberry Pi 4 and FT8, made quite a few contacts, mostly on 40 meters. And I tell you what, 40 meters was wall to wall with signals coming down. There was almost as many on 20, and I even made a few contacts on 10 meters. I coupled that with my in-fed half-wave antenna, and that system performed without any issues the entire time I was in the field. The second system that I was running was an APRS Digipeter. That was being run by a second Raspberry Pi uh, 4 computer connected to a MobiLink TNC3, and the radio for that setup was the Yezu FT65R. Uh, all of that was fed through a small roll-up J-pole that was elevated to about 25-26 uh, feet. I did run into one issue with that uh, right out of the gate. Uh, I was using Yak because Yak has a better offline mapping solution. Uh, however, not being as familiar with that particular application, I had failed to configure the Digipeter itself. So that was uh, took me about 10 minutes to sort that out and figure out exactly why it wasn't working. A simple couple of uh, checkboxes put in the right places, and that system was up and running. That ran perfect through the whole field day weekend. The MobiLink TNC2 did not require a recharge for the entire weekend, and that kind of surprised me. The radio, the FT65, I did have to swap batteries on the radio. I guess that was around uh, 9 or 10 o'clock Saturday evening, and then the second battery lasted until we packed up and left the field day site. So now that we've talked about what went right, or more or less right, let's talk about what went wrong. The first thing that went wrong was an issue with the battery box that I built earlier this year. I'm not exactly certain what is up with that, and I'm going to have to do some more testing to kind of figure that out, but I just didn't seem to get as much power out of that battery as I thought I should have. It could be something that I've done uh, incorrect when I wired up that battery box that could be draining the battery over time, I didn't charge it before fill day because typically lithium iron phosphate batteries will hold a charge without any issue sitting on the shelf. So I'm not sure if it's the battery itself or if it's uh, something miswired in the box that is kind of uh, slowly draining that over time. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more research into that and figure out exactly what's going on. Now, I also came up short an HDMI cable. I had originally planned to run uh, a test with a new 15-inch monitor that can be connected up to the Raspberry Pi. However, I found out early Saturday morning that we had a group of kids coming through the site that was going to be visiting each station. So I had originally planned to run the APRS Digipeter headless. But with those kids coming in, I wanted to put that on a monitor so they could see a little bit more about it as they came through my station. So I ended up using the only HDMI cable that I had to connect the APRS Digipeter to the television in the RV. That left me a HDMI cable short. So I just grabbed my MacBook since I've always got it with me for the video stuff. I just grabbed it and used it to VNC into the main Raspberry Pi 4 that was running the 857. This was easy to overcome and I wouldn't have necessarily had to have done this. I just selected to do this so the kids had a little bit more of a visual experience as they came through my station. And last but not least, I completely failed to copy the W1AW message. I had planned on using FL Digi to copy that message. However, I just forgot it. So I need to make a better effort to put a list together for things I want to accomplish on fill day. I kind of had most of it in my head, but obviously that's not good enough. I need to set an alarm or something uh, that's going to remind me to check off all of the things that I want to do on fill day so that nothing gets overlooked. 
So wrapping up, I want to thank each of you again that participated in the field day challenge. That was a lot of fun to see that many uh, call signs on the list that had that field day challenge message in the comments. Also, don't forget, you can download the full after action report using the link down in the description below. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. We will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3. And those uh, two panels giving me the 90 watts just wasn't giving me enough to put back into the batteries uh, to kind of give me exact... Dang it. That was also ran with a Raspberry Pi 4, a Yeezy... Da -da 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 -da. Yeezy... Yeezy? 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 Okay, let's try it again.